Okay, um, we're going to talk about the derivative and what that means. We're going to start out with uh, a graph, and this will be the y-axis. Get my pen chosen here. The y-axis will be uh, will be x. In meters, there we go, and now it's working. And time in seconds. And let's say we have the equation x equals 2t squared minus 5t plus 10. And that graph is going to look sort of like this. It's going to cross the y-axis at 10. And it's going to come down like this. And that's probably not very well drawn. But you could graph it on your own or put it on your calculator. And it's a parabola that crosses at 10. The y-axis at 10 goes down at parabola and then it heads back up. So, Let's look at that, and if this is a position time graph, and so this object is changing velocity. And if we take the derivative of this, we can find a function that will tell us the velocity at any time t. And if you remember, um, all that we do when we take the derivative is we're going to have a function that will tell us the slope of the tangent line at any time t. And of course, the slope of a position time graph is velocity. So in physics, we write it like this, dx dt. You can calculate, you'll write it dy dx, but our x value is time and our y value is x. So, and remember, that's going to equal n to the x, or n times x to the n minus 1. Well, if I do that for each of these terms, I have three terms here. Um, and remember, if you have a term without uh, a variable, then it just goes away. So I'm going to say dx, and really legally, let me change this, because legally I really should have the way I wrote it. Really should have t here. All right. If I dy dx, it would be n, x, n, minus 1. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say dx d t equals velocity, because in physics that's what it equals, and they'll test you that on the AP Physics C test, equals, okay, I'm going to say 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 minus 1 is just t, so 4t, minus um, 1 times 5 is 5, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, so 2 to 0 is 1, and then 10 becomes a 0. So this is my new function to find velocity at any time t, instantaneous velocity. So for example, if I ask you the question, what is the velocity at 5 seconds? Well, you would say, what's the instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds? You would put in this equation 4 times 5 seconds. And I guess we could actually put parentheses 5 here, meaning, um, and this should be, just to make it mathematically legal, v sub t. So v5 would equal 4 times 5 minus 5, right? And so that would be 20 minus 5, which would be 15. So velocity at 5 seconds would equal 15 meters per second. All right? So what if I ask you what's the velocity at 1 second? Well, you put in 1, and 4 times 1 is 4 minus 5, and have a negative 1 velocity at 1 second. So here's the question. Where is this object? Why don't I just ask you, without anything else, I gave you this function, 2, t squared minus 5t plus 10. I said, where does this object stop, if ever? 
And what you do at that point is you take the derivative and set it equal to zero. We've already taken the derivative up there. Because we set it equal to zero because the velocity is zero at that point. And so we find the zero of the function, which is where the velocity is zero. So we're going to say 4t minus 5. And all we have to do is solve this for t. And so you're going to add 5 to both sides. And t is going to equal to 1.25 seconds. What does that mean? That means if I go up here, there's a place where it's lowest which would be right near some place. And if I look at where it's lowest, that's 1.25 seconds. Mine's not drawn to scale at all. And what that means, it means at the minimal point, at the lowest point, the tangent line has a slope of zero. Now, pretend mine has a slope of zero. I had trouble drawing it directly across. But basically, the tangent line there, at a minimum, has a slope of zero. Well, slope of zero in this case means the velocity is zero. So, let me clean up the ink here. Um, so that's how you take, that's what the derivative means. It means the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the position time graph is velocity. And if I want to find where the velocity is zero, I just take the derivative and set it equal to zero. If I want to know the velocity any time t, I take the function, the derivative, and just pick the time in. All right, let me clear that up. Clear. Okay, I already cleared it up. Actually, let me go back. Let me clear this ink up. So, <clears throat> what if, let me see if I can draw this a little better now. That's a little bit better, uh, sort of. <laughs> so there's my function. Again, it's, it's position equals 2t squared minus 5t plus 10. And what this means, when I take the derivative, of course, dx dt, I got 4t minus 5. And what this means, this right here is half of my acceleration. So this is half of my acceleration. This right here is my initial velocity. And this is my initial position. And I think in your AP physics book and on your AP sheet, they actually do say V naught and X naught for initial positions and initial velocity. So what if I wanted to find the acceleration of this object? Well, then I just take the second derivative or take the derivative of the velocity, which would be D, sorry, D, d dt because this remember is x in meters and time oops time in seconds um, and so when I take the derivative this is now a velocity time graph this is a velocity time graph so if I were to draw it it would be a velocity time graph, it'd still be in meters and seconds, this would be meters per second, and this would be seconds. Now I have a linear line, I'll make this blue, I have a linear line with a y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of positive 4. So if I take the derivative of this, that's going to give me the slope of the tangent line. Well, guess what? That's a constant, right? So when I take the derivative of 5, it goes away. I take the derivative of this, and it's just 4. And so the acceleration is the slope of that velocity time graph, is just four, which is 4 meters per second squared. It's constant, doesn't change. And any time you have an order 2 equation, meaning it's a t squared, um, it's going to be constant acceleration. If you just got t, it's zero acceleration. If you got anything above 2, then the acceleration is changing. And so if we drew this, we would now have... Acceleration meters per second squared, time graph in seconds, and it would look, we'll make it red, it would look like this. And this number here would be four. Because four meters per second squared is what it is the whole time. That's the derivative. That's how you take it. That's what it means. 
And so that hopefully will be helpful just in the basic idea of what the derivative is and physics and what it means and how we do it.